Thank you, Keith. Good, morning, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'll be presenting the outlook for grains and oilseeds. The picture that I'll be painting is that, on average, the last couple of years have been good for the grains industry, and although prices are forecast to fall in real terms over the next five years, the overall picture is expected to remain reasonably favourable compared with the previous decade. Despite this, challenges remain for the industry and ine inevitably there will be producers that have difficult seasons. Over the last couple of years, average farm cash incomes of specialist cropping and mixed cropping and livestock farms have been higher than aver the average achieved over the previous decade. In the case of cropping specialists, this has been significantly high. Although production is down this year, these average incomes are forecast to remain above the 10-year averages, with average prices having increased. We do not forecast farm cash incomes over the medium term. However, we do forecast the aggregate gross value of production of grains and oilseeds. Although this value is forecast to fall over the outlook period, it will, by the end of this period, still be around 8% higher in real terms than the average achieved over the previous decade. As I've just mentioned, Australian production is down this year compared to last. Generally dry conditions were experienced across the winter cropping zone. However, Good, layer, good levels of lower layer soil moisture in many parts of the eastern states boosted crop development and yields. Although production is down, this needs to be put into context. Last year there was a big crop on the back of generally favourable uh, conditions across the cropping zone. And this year the crop will be just 3% below the five year average to 2011-12. This year's summer crop season has been difficult and total summer crop production is forecast to fall by 13% with grain sorghum and cotton production both to fall by around 20%. Falling cotton prices and favourable grain sorghum prices in the lead up to the planting window led to smaller areas planted of irrigated and dryland cotton. It was the intention of many growers to plant grain sorghum instead of dryland cotton. However, <coughs> hot and dry seasonal conditions um, led to many growers not realising these planting intentions and the conditions also hindered the development of early sown grain sorghum crops. In contrast, rice production is to increase by around 15%. As we know, rice production is closely tied to the availability of ir irrigation water and this year there are plentiful supplies in the rice growing regions. Now we'll take a look at the outlook for world prices over the outlook period. This year average prices are forecast to be higher than last. This follows sharp price increases in the second half of 2012 on the back of news of production for shortfalls for corn and soybeans in the United States and wheat in the Black Sea region. Next year, prices are forecast to fall quite a bit in response to higher world production. Over the medium term, prices are projected to ease in real terms, but remain above the averages achieved over the decade to 2011-12. We'll now look at, the, we'll look at the main supply and demand influences over the medium term later in my presentation. But first, I want to summarise the outlook for next year. As we've just discussed, prices are forecast to fall from the highs achieved this year in response to higher world production. World wheat production is expected to increase with incre production increases forecast for the Black Sea region and the European Union. In these regions, more favourable seasonal conditions are expected to lead to higher yields. Additionally, 
the planted area increased in response to favourable prices in the lead up to the Northern Hemisphere planting window. Coarse grain, produc coarse grain production is forecast to rise with wo world corn and barley production both expected to increase. Barley production is expected to rise in the major exporting countries with significant increases in the Russian Federation and Ukraine. World corn production is expected to rise largely as a result of higher production in the United States. World and world oil seams production is forecast to rise with soybean production expected to rise to a record 279 million tonnes. On the demand side, the most significant growth in consumption is forecast to occur for coarse grain. Lower prices and uh, higher demand from livestock industries are expected to drive this growth. A significant factor considered in the production of this price outlook has been the US drought. This drought began in the last US spring. It affected those US summer crops of corn and soybeans. Last year's wheat crop was largely unaffected with the winter crop already harvested and the spring wheat largely grown in areas less affected by the drought. With this year's crops, the winter wheat growing regions have remained dry and a large proportion of the crop has been rated as not in, not in good condition. There have been snowfalls just in the last, uh, last couple of weeks, but it's not yet clear how much assistance that will be to the crop. There have been recent improvements in the key soybean and corn growing regions in the Midwest, and above average rain is forecast for these regions over the coming months. Our forecasts are based on this improving outlook, and if these improvements fail to eventuate, this would be a significant upside risk for our world price forecasts. Over the medium term, world consumption is to continue rising with more livestock to feed and emerging economies expected to drive growth. Around 70% of wheat production is consumed as human food and its demand is forecast to continue growing. Coarse grains, on the other hand, consumption is expected to be driven by growing livestock industries in deve developing countries to satisfy the growing demand for protein. Corn consumption is expected to grow in Asia and Latin America, while barley production is expected to grow in the Russian Federation, the Middle East and North Africa. Over the medium term, Biofuel demand is not expected to drive growth in the industrial demand for coarse, coarse grains as it has in the recent past. In the United States, for example, corn mandates are set to reach their present maximum soon, after increasing over recent years. On the supply side, world grains and oilseed production are forecast to continue growing. In particular, grain production and exports from the Black Sea region are expected to grow and Brazil is expected to become the top soybean producer in the world. We heard from Paul Morris yesterday how developments in these regions are expected to increase competition in world markets. Just take a closer look at these two developments. In the Black Sea region, production is forecast to grow by 3% a year over the medium term assuming there will be average seasonal conditions. After increasing significantly next year, wheat production is expected to grow steadily over the remainder of the outlook period. Coarse grain production is also expected to grow steadily over the projection period, with demand for livestock feed increasing. These forecast increase in production are expected to outpace regional consumption and exports of wheat and coarse grains from this region are forecast to grow by around 6% a year. The Russian Federation is the largest wheat producer in this region and by the end of the projection period is expected to become the second largest exporter of wheat behind the United States. 
there is potential for even greater produ production growth from the Black Sea region, with there being potential for yield improvement and there being significant areas of idle, idle arable land that could be used for cropping. However, a significant amount of investment in infrastructure and equipment is required for these potential gains to be realised. In, La in, in Latin America, production of corn and soybeans has increased significantly over the last decade, with improved yields and more land being put into production. Going forward, there is potential to expand agri agricultural production in this region even further. In Brazil, land converted from pasture to cropping and additional land being brought into production in the Brazilian savanna could bring 119 addition million additional hectares to agricultural production. The area planted to soybeans is forecast to increase steadily and production in Brazil is expected to reach nearly 94 million tonnes over the projection period, which would see it overtake the United States as the largest producer. Corn production is also projected to rise in Latin America by around 2% a year. We now turn to Australian production over the medium term. The area planted to grains and oilseeds is expected to grow by around half a percent a year with coarse grains and oilseeds to grow a little faster than wheat. With this forecast increase in planted area and some improvement in yields expected, production is forecast to grow by around 1% a year. This begs the question, where can further growth come from to take maximum advantage of the world's growing food demand? Unlike Latin America and the Black Sea region, there is limited potential for significantly increasing the amount of land used for cropping. There is limited additional arable land that at present could be used profitably for agricultural production of any type. There is also no sign of another large scale structural adjustment likely to bring more land into cropping from livestock enterprises as occurred in the decade following the collapse of the wool price in the early 1990s. In this context, productivity growth is an important in, uh, challenge for the grains industry. Productivity growth has been slowing in the grains industry. For cropping specialists, it was over 3% a year in the decade to 1988. In the decade to 2011, it has fallen to less than half a percent a year. In mixed cropping and livestock enterprises, there has also been slowing productivity growth. In fact, in the decade to 2011, productivity fell. Meeting this productivity challenge will be, an important, will be important to the grains industry to increasing its future production and containing its costs. With this in mind, I'm looking forward very much to Andrew's presentation on the innovations that he has introduced into his business. As well as increasing productivity, it will be important to maintain the confidence of buyers in our product. And today we're very fortunate to have Christine here with us to talk about the importance of quality assurance in the export supply chain. Thank you. <coughs> 